And welcome back to Sister Circle Live. Our next guest says, credit and debt problems are the biggest financial challenges facing African Americans, especially black women. And she's here to tell us how we can improve both. Please welcome back the New York Times best-selling authors of Zero Debt, yes. the money coach, Miss Lynette Cox. Hello, Hello Lynette. Mm, yes, we're very happy. <laughs> but it's very hard to talk about debt and credit and all of that. But you're going to make it fun for us today. That's what are we right. going to be I doing know a lot differently? Of people feel challenged and mm. overwhelmed by this, but Let's not go there. Let's make it fun. We're going to play a little game with this. We're going to play okay? a little game? We're going to yes, play some games a matter of <laughs> Okay, well, come on. <laughs> All right. right. The 411 on credit and debt, okay? okay? Now, I have given you guys both a paddle that has true or false. Okay. I'm going to ask you some questions, make some statements. All you have to do is indicate true or false. All right. Okay. All right. So, question number one. Audience, play along with us, please. Oh, at, right. home. at home. <laughs> All right. So, question number one. One factor in your credit score is your income. True or false? True. Bonk, false. False. <laughs> false, really. <laughs> See, this is a big myth. A lot of people, and frankly, a lot of black people, think that factors like race, income, gender, marital status, geography, where you live, mm -hmm. factors into your credit score. Mm. None of it matters, believe it or not. There's only five factors that do go into your credit score. Okay. Number one, uh -huh. your payment track record. Of course. How well do you pay your bills on time? Okay, uh, That's 35% of your credit score. 35. Number two, the amount of debt you're carrying. Specifically, credit card debt. That's thirty percent. That's my number problem. three. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm, we got to talk about that debt. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> number three is the length of your credit history. That's fifteen percent of your score. Number four is the type of credit that you're carrying. Mm -hmm. And number five is inquiries or new mm -hmm. applications. Um, you want to have a credit score of seven hundred or higher. Oh, you man. can check out a website called Credit. <laughs> uh -huh. Every time if we do these segments. Score, if you don't know your credit score, check out CreditSesame.com. Okay. They got a free app. They'll tell you your credit score free of charge and tips on how to improve it. Okay? How accurate is that right. site, though? 100% accurate. Got I it. use it all the time, monthly. Okay. okay. <laughs> really? So, mm -hmm. so even and if you use that site, it doesn't. And if you say monthly, does it ding your credit? No, absolutely okay. not. They give you credit scores. It's what's called a soft inquiry, not a hard okay. pull. Got so it. they'll show you your credit score month after month. Okay. Totally, totally free. That's okay. Question Question number two, paying your rent on time can increase your credit score. True or false? Mm -hmm. Your rent, your, your, false. your rent, your not rent. a mortgage. Right, rent. rent. Okay, both of you said false. Mm -hmm. The answer is actually true. Really? really? Yes. We are failing. See, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's why you need the money coach to come that's into right. credit. We're right. Right. The homeowner. Trust so. me, you guys are probably not the only ones getting these answers wrong. Traditionally, people who had traditional mortgages alone mm. that from a bank were the only ones who could get credit for that. But now you actually can have your rental payment history, and there's tens of millions of people that. have that reported to the credit bureaus. Bottom line, though, you can't do it yourself. Okay. Because imagine, everybody's going to be like, yeah, I paid my rent on time. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to have a third party to do it to verify it. There's companies ah. like Rent Reporters, Rent Track, they'll do it for you right. to report your okay. uh, payments to Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. Your credit score can go up by like 10 to 50 points just by getting rent payments added to your credit report. But you need okay? to have But you got to have you got to have a third party. That, and then yeah. the, the third party is very essential. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. To verify to that verify what it. you said is true. Okay, okay. question number three. Okay. It's, best to, pay okay. <laughs> it's best to pay off debt first before you begin saving money. True or false? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, ladies. I, 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 I'm going to come personally coach you. Yes. It's false. Oh. Both of you got it wrong. Wow. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. You have to do both simultaneously. A lot of people think you have to pay off debt first, but if you only pay off debt and you have no savings, what's going to happen? Anytime you have a little emergency, the car breaks down, mm. you know, the toilet leaks or whatever, you're going to have to whip out plastic, yeah. and then you'll go back into debt anyway. True. So you got to do both simultaneously, right. okay? Or if your debt is that bad, you can't even have a credit card for emergencies or anything like that anymore. <laughs> so here's, ahead, what, you, here's what you do. Use a look. If you got a tax refund check, for example, take that money, use some of it to pay mm -hmm. off debt and some of it to build your savings. It's do gone both already. simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Question number four. Okay, making minimum payments on your credit cards is okay as long as you pay your bills on time. I know that's false. Um, minimum payment is false. Um, <laughs> right? Oh, why didn't you go with her? I don't know. Yes. Because oh, so I was the thinking, well, at least you pay it and you're not late. But right. Okay, go okay. Ahead. so number one, that you're, you're taking care of category number one. You've paid it on time. Yes. But here's the thing. If you make minimum payments, you never you're having, right, you're never going to pay it off. You're going to pay extra interest, and you're going to make your credit score suffer mm -hmm. because you're going to have a high credit yes. utilization rate. You want to only charge up about 
Third. 25%, 30% maximum of your available credit limits. But if possible, pay in full every yes. single month. Or if you can't do that, pay two or three times the minimum. People say, Lynette, I'm broke, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. Pay $25 extra. Pay something extra. extra. Right. Don't just make minimum payments, okay? okay. All right. And then, question number five. This is my answer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Millennials in their 20s and 30s are the segment of the population who are most delinquent right now on their student loans. Most delinquent? No, no. my friends delinquent. We're not millennials. <laughs> 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 okay. Well, you guys both got that right. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Okay. okay. Right. Believe it or not, guess who? It's the baby, baby boomers. boomers. Oh, wow. In their 50s yep. and 60s. More than millennials, more than Gen Xers, the 40-somethings like yes. us. Right. You know? yes. And yes, more than even the silent generation, baby boomers. Here's why. A lot of them have co-signed for their kids, yes. student loans and stuff like that. Oh. So if you got those loans, you need to start aggressively paying those off. Okay. Pick up the shortest payment plan or ask your employer because a lot of employers will actually help pay off student loans as well. Yeah. Wow. The millennials yeah. are still at home. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're making it happen. Right. They're trying to pay them off too, but they're yeah. not as delinquent Absolutely. as folks okay. in their 50s and 60s. Okay. Yeah. My goodness. So, well, thank you kindly. You're so very we welcome. appreciate you guys. I, I did horrible on the test. <laughs> well, but I feel like there's so many areas about credit and debt that people, none of us learns this in school. Right. You can have a master's degree, right. an MBA, and nobody teaches you this. Right. So this yep. is why we need to talk about credit and debt issues. Yes, That is why goodness. it's yep. so important for right. financial education education in school, starting I, even in junior high school and absolutely. high school. And frankly, a lot for the African-American community, as you mentioned at the top, and I told your producers, yes. there's so many of us who struggle with these issues, and it factors into a whole host of things. It does. It factors into your relationships, yep. your ability to get a job, because yep. a lot of employers now are pulling your credit Why? Yes, Why? 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 Yeah. Sherm did a study. Sherm is the Society for Human Resources Management. They found that 58% of all employers nationwide do credit pulls to determine who to hire and who to promote. But so why, if you have why, why, does, why, the, why? Like it or not, I don't agree with it, but the thinking of employers is that if you're responsible, you honor your financial obligations, you're likely to be a better employee. Mm. Wow. You're turning your projects on, sign, on time, come to work on time, mm -hmm. etc. Well, I don't agree, but that's the thing. Me neither. Me I'm neither. an amazing employee. Yes. <laughs> Thanks but so much for these great <laughs> tips, Lynette. It was really, really fun, and Thank I you. cannot wait to see you again. Uh, please make sure you check out askthemoneycoach.com for all of this amazing information. Absolutely. And up next, we hear from you and what the people say. Thank yes. you, Lynette. Lynette. <laughs>